After the nut has been tightened, it's secured by a split pin which passes right through the bolt. The position of the hole has been very carefully determined. This is time consuming and therefore costly, but this is one of the strongest methods of locking a nut onto a bolt. It's a mechanical method rather than a friction one, and on an aircraft like this fighter, the fastenings will have to take a lot of punishment. drawing is supposed to tell you everything you need to know to assemble a component. This part specifies the screw you'll need. But can you understand it? What does the M signify? It tells you which thread form is required. There are several in use but they all have this basic V-shaped profile. What does the one refer to? It's the distance between corresponding points on the thread. This is called the pitch, and it tells you how coarse or fine the thread is. And what does the six measure? It tells you this diameter. The strength of the screw depends on this, and it's called the major diameter. And this tells you the minimum length of screw thread required for the job. Lastly, full thread. Which one of these three won't do? Well, this bright lad managed to select just the right one for the job. Probably the commonest way we use screw threads is for fastening things together, but there are many other uses. Thread cutting can be done to a very high degree of accuracy, and this is useful in the design of measuring instruments. For example, the micrometer. Its accuracy depends on a precision-made screw thread. The thread has a pitch of half a millimetre. So, for one full turn of the thimble, the gap between these faces changes by precisely that amount. Again, it has a V-form profile, and you could find many more uses of this type of thread. The great advantage is that it can be machined easily and accurately. On a fly press, you see a V-form thread being used for fine adjustment. But here, the V-form is superimposed on a different type of thread. This is an Acme thread form. You usually find it wherever a thread is needed to transmit motion. In a bench vise, you use another kind of thread. It helps with the quick release mechanism, this half nut. It also helps to transmit load. You can see how if we look more closely. It's called a buttress thread. Force is applied through the square faces, but in the forward direction only. A center lathe also has a split nut action. But in this case, you want to transmit both movement and load in two directions. So you use an Acme thread. Some fastening methods don't rely on the action of a screw thread. 
solid riveting may be one of the oldest joining methods, but it's still an important one. On the aluminium fuselage of this fighter, they need rivets which are light as well as strong. These rivets are made from an aluminium alloy. The choice of rivet head depends on the particular design requirement. These are rounded, they're called snap head rivets. But elsewhere on the fuselage, you'll find other types of head. Where a really flat surface finish is required, the rivets are always countersunk. These rivets are made from an aluminium alloy which hardens with time. If used in this hard state, they'd be liable to fracture. So, before use, they must be softened by heat treatment. First, the rivets are immersed in a salt bath. This keeps them at a uniform temperature of 500 degrees Celsius or centigrade. After half an hour, they're removed from the bath and quenched in cold water. This sequence of heating and rapid cooling softens this particular material. After quenching, they're cleaned by being dipped into methylated spirits. Then they're stored in a fridge until they're needed. This slows down the age hardening process. But you can't stop age hardening altogether. On the shop floor, they use color coded containers so that men working on each shift can be certain of using rivets which are strong but not hard. Solid riveting requires two people with access to the joint from both sides, but this is a different riveting technique. The aircraft industry created a more special need, a process for riveting a joint when access is only possible from one side. Blind rivets provided the answer, and now they're used throughout engineering as a standard sheet metal fastening. A blind rivet is hollow, but this type is pre-assembled on a pin which fits into a special gun. As the gun fires, the tail breaks off and a head is formed on the blind side of the joint. This animation shows the basic principle. First, the tail of the rivet is expanded, and then the shank to fill the hole and clench the joint. But this is only one of a wide range of automatic riveting techniques. Joining things together is a basic industrial operation. Though blind rivets are more costly to produce than solid ones, they're quick and easy to apply. Cost is one important factor in deciding how to join things. The type of material is another, and I'm sure you can think of many more.